Okay, so uh, magic triangle. This is the same thing as this formula. So big N is the number of particles. Yes. Yes. So we just write everything down. Number of particles. So if a question says how many? Nine. So the units are going to be atoms or molecules or formula units. Na is always the same thing. Avogadro's number. Where the particle depends on what the substance is. If it's ionic, covalent, or atomic. And then small n is the number of moles, and of course the unit is M-O-L. Sometimes you'll see what's the amount. The question might ask, what's the amount? What's the number of moles? You might be asked the number of, what's the number of particles or how many of. You've got to pay attention to what substance you have. So the way the magic triangle works is you cover up what you're looking for. So if I'm asked what is the number of molecules, you would have to cover up the big N. The two letters that remain will be your formula. So if they're beside each other, you multiply. If I'm asked what is the amount, I'm looking for the number of moles, I cover up moles. My formula would be big N over NA. So if you're on the top, if your formula ends up with the two letters, one's on top, one's on the bottom, it's division. If they're beside each other, it's multiplying. It's really useful to know what units you're going to have. So the units are really important. This will be helpful if you're finding anything to do with mass or molar mass. Now, triangle works the same way. You cover up the letter that you're looking for. Mass. Make sure your masses are in grams before you put it in the formula. Now, you can convert the numbers before you start. Because there's a thousand milligrams in one gram, converting to milligrams you would divide by a thousand and there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. Anytime you see M before something, it means milli. So millimoles, milligrams, and it just means it's one thousandth the size of what we want. How many grams in 250 milligrams? Yeah. You divide by a thousand, so 0 0.25 grams. 0.25 grams. If I go from 15 grams to milligrams, you're going to have to multiply by a thousand. 
so 15,000 milligrams. Okay? Hey, okay, thanks. 63.55 atomic mass units, and from somewhere behind me I heard 63.55 grams per mole. So, 63.55U, what's that the mass of? Of what? Of copper what? Of a copper atom. And so if I've got 10 copper atoms, what's the mass? Yeah. So if I've got 10 copper atoms, and the mass is 63.55 atomic mass units for one copper atom. Then 10 copper atoms have a mass of 63. Sorry, 635.5 atomic mass units. If one of them weighs 5, 10 of them will weigh 50. Now, how many significant digits in 10? One. Nope. Nope. Zero. Nope. Four. There's an infinite number. Because it's a count, right? It's a count of atoms. You can't have half an atom. So there's an infinite number of sig figs in 10 copper atoms. So you have to go with the number of significant digits in the mass. So we already have the correct number of sig figs. So A is fairly simple. It gets trickier when we get to B. And there's two different ways you can do this. Okay, so B. B, what do we know? We know the mass. So we know the molar mass. We know we've got copper atoms. So right now we've got units, atoms and grams per mole. Nothing's going to cancel. What unit do we want in our answer? Grams. So that's up there. That leaves atoms and moles. Is there a ratio that contains atoms and moles, given that we're talking about an element? It's the only other ratio we've talked about. Avogadro's number. So we also know 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. So I'm not just randomly pulling numbers out of my hat. I knew I want grams, so I've got to get rid of atoms and moles. How convenient if I've got one value that has both of them in it. Okay, so which ratio is going to come first? to pick the ratio that has my unit already in it. So I'm going to pick 63.55 grams for one mole. Because it already has grams in it and that's the unit I want. My second ratio has to have what unit in it? What unit? does it have to have moles in it? So it cancels that mole. So I've got to use my Avogadro's number and I've got to flip it over so that moles are in the right place. So now I've got rid of moles. So now I've got to get rid of atoms of copper. And how nice, I've got 10 atoms of copper.
1.0556 times 10 to the negative 21 grams. That's so light, you couldn't even feel it if it hit you on the nose. Okay? So, negative 21 grams. That's really, really small. There's 20 zeros before that one. How many significant digits can you have in your final answer? Four. Because Avogadro's number is a, ratio, is a known quantity. It's a ratio. Ten atoms, 63.55 grams per mole, and Avogadro's number. You've only got two formulas. Which one of these two formulas contains the letter of what you are trying to solve for? We want grams. So which one is it? Second one, because we're looking for lowercase m. So if we're looking for m, we can't use this yet. Because we don't know moles. But we can find moles. So if I take 10 atoms, divide by Avogadro's number, that will give us moles. So you always use your unrounded value. A common mistake here is not even to have enough sig figs. So keep that number and then multiply it by 63.55. What do you think? Is it close to the other number? Exact same answer. I'm not lying to you when I say you can use either way. There's even a third way. In your note, when we introduce the mole, there's an actual conversion factor for how much one atom weighs in relation to grams in use. So you could just multiply by that. Ooh. Does that say G? It just says G. Yeah. Because that's our answer. Okay? So you can do it either way. But it's good to know. Any other questions? No, I don't. You have a question for me? No. Okay. Um, is there ever any question we have to do both dimensional analysis and No. No. You can do, if you do formulas, you could do dimensional analysis to check your answer. But you don't have to do it both ways. Okay. Okay? I'm not kidding when I say I will not force you to use either method. So but I'm going to be I'm going to be marking this question. If you do dimensional analysis, so if you do